Uh, today we're going to run through the truss install on a 2013 and up front axle. Um, let's start with the first step and we'll remove the steering damper. We're going to pop the tie rod off just because it's so easy on these trucks. Uh, 21 millimeter wrench or socket. Loosen the nut past the nylock so then you can pop the tie rod out and when you go to pull the nut, if you get past the nylock, you won't get stuck having to hold the stud. So we're going to use a few things to get all the paint off of the axle today. Um, the uh, needle scaler, this looks pretty good for getting in the tight little cracks in here. James, see if you can get in there and show that metal can really get in the corners and get you down to bare metal in there. You can also use wire wheel, a sharp chisel a scraper, um, flap wheel grinder, anything you need to do to get in there, but these are pretty sweet. wheel and clean get little here little there just to take a little off the surface and sink the tube in just a yep. hair going to remove a little more paint around the edges but that's um, going to let the tube sit into the differential just a little bit better a little more surface area without removing too much material just a slight cut to the end of the tube. Little bit of removal, probably about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth comes off each end just to make it fit a little better into the, into the axle seats. Looks like on the 2019 there might be a slight difference in the axle. That black Sharpie line right there, looks like you gotta take that about a quarter inch off of this plate just to let it fit the C better. Uh, most of the areas, you know, probably gonna have to go over this again when we catch some things, but most of the areas that need to be cleaned up, uh, outer C, come underneath. We need to weld the tubes to the housing, so get deep in those corners, make sure you clean everything out of there. This middle sleeve between the cast sections, clean the whole way around that. There'll be some sub substantial welds going on on that. And then similar over here, just basically clean. We're gonna try to get a weld up between that C. I'll explain that in a bit. And between and outer C on the other side. So this small gap on this side is what we want, but this side is also, I'm just pushing straight up on it and we can close that gap up. So this is just to show it doesn't take a lot of force. Um, you could use a ratchet strap or a tie down around the axle if you're by yourself. We got two of us, so I'm gonna just push up on it. We'll cut the case and tax it. Not super important. There's, you definitely have some movement side to side, that's okay. But we're just going for le basically level, bottom of the tube, s sort of level with the bottom of the C on both sides. Just try to make that angle look balanced side to side. So we're tacked in place, about four tacks each side, nothing tacked in the center yet. What we're gonna start doing now is moving around. We, before any of the center plates go in, we gotta get a full weld around the C's and as much as we can on the diff, but we need to move around. Um, as Casey's welding, you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna start laser temp um, checking certain spots and I'll go over the temps when we get there.
Another mandatory part of the job right there. These things are cheap these days. Everyone should have one. Getting our first welds on the cast center section. This preheating this is really important for the weld to stick. We can't get it too hot. So I'm gonna start lasering around this area. And I don't really ever want to see that go above, let's see. Can't really read the camera. But you know, that's the first weld. It's gonna take some time for the heat to get in. But we don't want to see that area ever get above 225 max just to be safe. So Casey's been welding a little bit. You can hear some, some of the, cra the cast cracking and moving around, totally normal. We're just trying to get some heat in there to the material so it can take the final weld. We're gonna do two, maybe three passes in places. And you can see right here, we're pretty cold still. So it's fine to just keep on welding. It takes a little bit to let the heat soak in. Let's check the outer sea. Just got some weld in there. That weld just got put in, so it's gonna take a little bit for the heat to come through. But we're right in the weld, still pretty cold, so can definitely keep on welding. Even up to 200 degrees still won't burn you. So you can also just do a quick touch by hand. Make sure you can keep your hand on. I think it's around 180 degrees is when you have to pull your hands off. So just, you can do some quick checks that way too. So you might notice we've got a ground right on the tube. I did not unhook the batteries or anything. Um, probably should recommend that you do that. As long as the ground is close to or on the actual material you're welding, I've never had a problem with not disconnecting the batteries. Um, so take that at your own risk. Right now we're just getting the heat into the diff. It, it's that cast in the tube is not gonna weld well until it gets some heat in there. So probably gonna end up with about three passes total. One, first pass is filling the gap in preheat, one on the bottom and one on the top. I'll come back and show that later. Just make sure you're not overheating the diff. Use your hand close by, feel it. First pass in on this part of the tube. Um, probably end up with two or three over here also. I was thinking about two passes, but or th two, maybe three. We end ended up with two. That tube fitment was good enough where just laid a second wider pass over the top pass, and that's gonna lock that in really well. Note, we're now on to laying our bottom seat weld for the second and third pass that we're gonna want on the cast section specifically. And keep in mind, important part, it may seem like this is going and we're continuously welding everywhere, but we're not. It's been, since starting, we're letting places cool. Uh, it's been a good solid 45 minutes or an hour. These 2013 plus axles under real hard abuse a few times, um, people have twisted the differential and the cast sections on the steel tubes. So we're gonna try to get some welds in some of these corners where we can. Um, so right in up through here, we're gonna try to get a weld in there before we put our fill plate in, which will also weld to that. Um, just to keep any twisting from happening. And on an axle truss, the truss tube itself is in tension, which is now gonna change the main tube itself uh, into being in compression. So putting a weld in here is gonna act like a stopper just to try to help keep those pieces from slipping over each other. There's our quick tube to cast section weld. Getting some of the other brackets on. Want this to fit tight up top, so we've got a clamp. Pulling it down, uh, then we can start bending this into place, getting it tacked in. All right, Casey just pulled the top clamp. Uh, this middle plate, super important, because it's tying the two cast sections together. 
when the axle takes a hard hit, the axle is now getting put in pretty straight compression, being that the lower tube is now taking a lot of the stretch loads. So once the weld goes in across this plate over the top of the two cast sections, it's going to essentially make them like one so that they can't compress towards each other anymore under a hard hit. And it's going to help keep them from twisting under high crawling, four low, rock crawling type loads that could twist the center section. So these back gusset uh, reinforcement plates, don't tack weld one in and think you're going to get the other one in. They have to go in at the same time. So you have to come in from the side to get it in, and then you have to get this one in, and now you can start placing them and tacking them. That's essentially going to be their layout right there. This plate we're gonna tack in here. Those little lines right there, just so you can tap, use a hammer and tap a little radius in, and it's gonna fit right up in there. It'll make sense in a minute. Some of these fill plates, you're gonna have times where you have to be a fabricator and change things a little bit. So we're putting a couple taps with a hammer, a little bend on this plate, clearance this corner to clear our weld on the tube and it's gonna fit in right here. And you can see kind of why we tip that down, just get a little closer. Things aren't always gonna be perfect, couple gaps to fill up here, but clearance this corner down here just to give us room and um, gonna be ready to start tacking this in. Got our other plates tacked in, just so you can see that turn or that uh, little angle we gave that top tab. Things don't have to line up straight. We're filling some gaps here. A little room for uh, adjustment side to side. Every truck's a little different. You can see where we took off a little extra on that plate. Lined up pretty good. Rosette welds on the middle plate. And this one, angles are a little, you know, it's, it's we're going for making it fit tight up against the tubes. Not so much that making that angle straight once the weld's in there, you won't even see that. And then that tab was bent down to touch better in there. This gap, Casey's filling right here. We just want to get a little, um, basically, filling between, let's see if I can get my fingers in there, those two plates. So the cast and that plate can't compress towards each other on a hard hit. It's just a little extra security and worth, you know, trying to fill in there as much as you can. Just build that up over a few passes. Casey's midway through bouncing around, filling gaps. Part of the game, got that little uh, block between the plate and the cast diff filled up and we're uh, peening everything to take stress out of the weld as we go. And ready for the upper C gussets. They're just gonna sit about like that. Couple. Ready to weld. Be ready to yank that cardboard, just in case. There is the upper C gusset. We tacked in both sides and then split it up. Did about inch and a half on one side, went to the other side. Use a little air to cool that rubber isolator because it will start to smoke a little bit. Uh, just be ready with the wet rag, something to keep it cool in a pinch if you need to, if it gets real hot. Um, anyways, there's that step. Everything's all welded up. Final walkthrough. Kind of see where everything goes. Weld around the top. Starting to paint. Glossy. Always 
makes every detail of the welding stand out. Sea gusset on the top. Back underneath. Three passes. Backside details. Lock all those tubes in. And then two big solid passes on the ends. Make sure those are locked in. Came out good, went together pretty clean. Backside. Center gussets. That ought to do it.